Hi everyone, I'm the co-creator of Redwood.js. So you might be wondering, what's Redwood.js, what's Redwood SDK? I'm here to give you the context for how that happened. About a year ago, Tom Preston Warner, the founder of GitHub, asked me to take over stewardship of Redwood.js, and I said no. I was absolutely terrified of building another startup. But that evening, I lay in bed and I just couldn't fall asleep. There was a framework inside of me that I wanted to push out into the world, and I called it Redwood SDK. Here to show you more about that framework is Aurora Scharf. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so hello everyone. Thank you for that intro, Peter. My name is Aurora. I'm a software engineer and member of the React community. And I had the chance to play around with Redwood SDK, uh, and I would love to share what I've learned. And for sure, a lot of people here are not familiar with it, so this is going to be like a 10 minute crash course. So let's get started. Uh, if I can get my clicker working. There we go. So it begins as a vid plugin that unlocks SSR, React server components, server functions, and real-time features. And you probably already know Redwood SDK because it's just vid, TypeScript, and React, and web standards. So there's actually not that much to learn. In Redwood SDK, every route is just a function. There's no like special syntax or compilermatic. It's just a route that takes a request and returns a response, or even a page. It's built on web standards, and request and response follow the native web API. So you can stream responses, upgrade protocols, or debug and dev tools without any wrappers or black boxes. So here we are streaming a file directly into R2 storage. <clears throat> Furthermore, there are interrupters that shape the request flow before it hits your route. Uh, you can intercept requests, check auth, redirect, or halt the response on a per route basis with access to the environment and context. <clears throat> and there's middleware allowing you to run logic before and after your routes. It's also part of the re request response flow in which you can like inject headers, set up context, or stream from the edge. Redwood SDK gives you total control of the document without any hidden magic. So you can choose what goes over the wire and do things like turn client-side React on or off, preload tags, or inline styles. Built with React server components, everything is server first by default. Your components run on the server, streaming HTML straight to the browser. And when you need interactivity, you can mark your components with use client. So it's the same mental model that you might be familiar with already. Lastly, Redwood SDK is built specifically for Cloudflare without any adapters. So what runs locally is also what runs in production. And in development, you use Miniflare to emulate Cloudflare workers, giving you a clean path from idea to deploy. So yeah, let's jump over to a demo and see what we can build. Um, all right. Woo! <laughs> so I'm here in the worker TSX file, which is the entry point for my Cloudflare worker. And in Redwood, every route is just a function, so uh, we're just using functions here returning response objects. And we can also um, uh, return JSX here. Uh, let's say like that, and that will also work just fine. And then there's middleware, so for every request, it will just pass through all of this middleware. I have some middleware to set the common headers, and then I have this session middleware uh, utilizing Cloud for Durable objects to manage user sessions. Let's also go ahead and add some get user middleware here. So in this case, I want to populate my app context here uh, if the user is logged in. So I have this um, getting the user and then adding it to the app context. And the app context is this mutable object that is passed to all of our components and routes, allowing us to server-side share uh, information. <clears throat> um, Let's actually go ahead and uh, render a document down here. So let's render a um, Node.js document here. I think this is, this is too big, okay. And let's add in a set of routes here and move the index route in here. So that will look like this. So that means that when our route is matched here, it will be placed inside this Node.js document. And here it's just a document with, there's no like script tag here, there's no client-side hydration happening just uh, HTML here. Let's actually also add a layout, because we also have layouts in Redwood. So let's do a layout here and wrap this with a app layout and move our index file um, route inside that. And that will also work. And this JSX is a little bit boring. Let's do a home page instead. 
and uh, surprise, it's a to-do app. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> No way. <laughs> All right, so actually let's have a look um, at this homepage here. So notice I'm using the, the context that I set up in the middleware to actually showcase that I am logged in as myself and conditionally render uh, here. And in Redwood we have server components by default, so this is a server component. And let's also go ahead and add another server component here. Let's add some to-dos stats. And I want to use suspense, I want to stream in uh, using some fallback UI here. Let's see if that will work. Yep, so I have this streaming uh, and then this server component pops in there. And this is now an async server component, so very like basic server component, getting some to-dos here from my uh, Cloudflare D1 database and then just rendering some JSX here. All right, what else? <clears throat> um, Yes, so actually let's go ahead and uh, utilize this set of API routes because I have these API routes here which I extracted to a se separate um, file here and I have uh, CRUD operations for my to-dos. So I want to use this uh, in our new route. Let's add it here as a simple uh, to-dos like that. And we should be able to navigate here. There we go. So this is, it's just simple to do. It's just a server component in this Node.js document using server component, um, async await, and this API that I added, like very, just web standard forms here. So I can do that. For some reason, if I prefer to work like that, that's totally fine. I don't need JavaScript for this, right? <clears throat> And furthermore, if we wanted to actually protect this route, this is like a, a user thing, right? We can add in interrupters here. So um, interrupters can allow us to um, modify what happens before a route is matched. So in this case, I want to add in a is authenticated interrupter here. And it's, it's just a function, so you can add like multiple functions here, and it just redirects me uh, to the login if I'm trying to access this, if I'm not logged in. Now, uh, what if we want interactivity? We are React developers, right? So we probably want to add some interactivity to this. So let me go ahead and render a uh, regular document here. So I have like a bunch of routes here, and we're gonna look at that. But first, let's see the document. So here, we have um, a script tag here, which is importing a client TSX script. And this is further below over here. Uh, it is calling in a client from the Red SDK client, which is actually hydrating our RSC payload now. So we can uh, add client side React. And then for the user routes, let's see, I want to make this interactive also. Right now, there's just like a, a login and a logout. The logout just uh, removes my session and redirects, so that should be pretty easy. As for the sign in, I want to add some client side interactivity to this one. And um, to do that, we use use client, of course. So yeah, that allows me to use things like use action state. I have like more interactive components in here. I'm also calling server functions, uh, React server functions that works as expected um, in, in Redwood SDK. And I should be able to log in here. Let's see if this is gonna work with my actual username here. Yep, so I have that interactive now, uh, the spinner for this uh, hydrated document. <clears throat> Um, what else? Well, we have a bunch of routes, but we don't have any client-side uh, navigation right now. And maybe I wanted to add, you know, view transitions on navigation. <laughs> let's go ahead and do that, and uh, maybe we can get it to work. So let's add a view transition around my homepage here. So I'm going to wrap all of my stuff here with a view transition, um, like that. And it's actually doing an enter and an exit animation, so it's going to slide nicely. And right now, it should not work. Let's see. So it's not working, right, even though this component is entering and exiting the screen or the UI. So yeah, we don't have any clients on navigation. And usually, uh, we can have this um, under the hood using transitions. Most routers do that. So we can get to the client TSX again and just init the client navigation. And. Uh, Let's see if that will work. That should be enough to trigger my view transition here. Oh, I forgot something. I need to remove this duplicate home screen here. Let's go. OK, there we go. <laughs> so we have this nice view transition now. Yeah. 
using the, the client-side navigation. So what actually happens is that Redwood SDK will intercept all internal links and then push that to the URL, fetch the new RSC payload, and then hide it on the client. So it works with RB transitions. Now, I really, I'm really into like new React features, and I wanted to try and build like a fancy uh, to-dos page here. So let me just show you what I did here. So here I'm getting some initial to-dos, uh, passing it down uh, to uh, the to-dos component, a client component. I have some view transitions on my suspense, doing all of the new features here. So it should work now and animate my suspense boundary. Yep, so I have that nice view transition. And what else? Well, I just put like every single feature in this, <laughs> in this page. So it's a client component. I'm reading a promise with use. I have use action state with this async producer. Use optimistic. I have actions, all of the fancy async react that we saw yesterday. And I even added a view transition to my to-do item. So yeah, a lot of stuff here. Let's see if it works as expected with Redwood as a game. I should be able to add new to-dos. And it's going to be optimistic. And it's doing this syncing to the server here. So we have all of the interactive features, and um, also we have this nice uh, animated reordering with that view transition. So yeah, I'm pretty happy. I was able to add all of the all of the cool things that I like to build with. <laughs> um, all right. So one more thing I wanted to show, which is a pretty cool feature of Redwood SDK, is this real time uh, feature that they have. So I made this real time demo page here. Um, and here, I'm actually utilizing uh, durable objects to manage a theme, uh, current theme. And I also have a reactions component, which is a server component getting also uh, reactions from a durable object. Um, and then I have an emoji picker, which is a client component, firing off server functions to add emojis to this. So yeah, um, actually, it's not that hard to make this real time. That's what we're going to do next. Let me first show you that it's currently not doing any real time. So if I have two uh, separate clients here, you'll see it's, as expected, only updating one of them. Um, but what we can do is we can hook up this to um, uh, WebSockets. So let me get back to the client here and in it this real time client which Redwood SDK provides. And there's a key which will determine what set of clients will share this uh, content. So we can add that as the path name. And finally, let's get back to the worker and then just hook up a real-time route over here to connect this to WebSockets. Let's do a real-time route uh, here, like that. And um, I think that should be enough. Let's see. Yeah, so now we have this bi-directional uh, connection here utilizing WebSockets. And all of the same clients here on the path name share this same RSC payload. So we actually just switch from a fetch-based RSC payload to a stream-based RSC payload with just a couple lines of code. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to release this to production, that would be very simple. I would just run um, PMPM PM release, and it's like a one command deploy sort of thing. And that would push, um, upload my website to Cloudflare, create the database assets and all the source assets. And then I already did this, so let's just go over to the, the real version here. It's on Cloudflare. And uh, try to scan the QR code. Let's see if we can get this to work. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I'm so happy that worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. So yeah, it works. <laughs> so we were building here on the web standard request response uh, with complete control of the document. We utilize cloud for durable objects and databases, and we could stream server components. Um, we had the simple to do's SSR page um, with Node.js, but also added hydration and could utilize all of the new React features as expected. And we even added view transitions with client side navigation. Uh, and finally, we added this real time um, page using WebSockets. So it was all in the same app. And uh, yeah, Redwood SDK kind of takes uh, React and TypeScript and Cloudflare and binds it together as something that feels cohesive, uh, but still based on web standards. Great. Let's, uh, let's get back to the slides. <laughs> OK. Um, yeah, so as we saw in this demo, Redwood SDK is pretty cool, but I didn't build this. So let's just do a round of applause for the people who did. <laughs> And um, 
Red was the case currently in beta, and I know the team is working very hard to get it stable and finish up their V1 release. Uh, yeah, and there's a lot more exciting things in the work, so keep an eye out for that. And you can support the team by starring the repo. Um, yeah, try it out, and if you like it, tell your friends and coworkers. And uh, Peter will be on the panel coming up later today, so definitely catch that if you want to learn more. So thank you to the Redwood SDK team for letting me represent them today, and thank you, ReactConf. Nice.